All right, in this video, what I'm gonna show you how to do is take a system of equations, in this case, two equations, one of which is a quadratic, that's this one, and the other being linear, that's the bottom one. So this is a quadratic written out in standard form, y equals x squared plus bx plus c. So we're gonna get a U shape or an upside down umbrella shape. That's what this would be creating. I can tell you right now, because my term in the very front is a positive, that's a positive one right there, we just don't show it. We know that this is gonna open upward, so we're gonna have a U shape. This one here is gonna create a line, okay? So we've got linear and we've got a quadratic. And we're asked to find either the two places that they intersect, the one spot, or maybe they don't hit at all, like you see right here. This line would never hit this parabola. But if I were to do this and shift it up there, it's gonna hit twice. Or there's the possibility that it would only hit it once. It's just gonna graze it. We're gonna have a parabola and the other line's just gonna hit, boom, right there at one spot and one spot only. So there's three possibilities here with this problem. I could have no solutions where my line never hits my parabola. I could have one solution where it just grazes it, or I could have two solutions where it cuts through it and hits it twice. All right, let's find out what we're working with and let's figure out what two numbers, x and y, would work for both of these. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the substitution method to solve this. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at this bottom equation and I want you to put a box around the expression of 3x minus 10. 3x minus 10 is equal to y, or in other words, it's the exact same thing as a y. So what we need to do is we need to take 3x minus 10, we're gonna go up here to this top equation, and instead of saying y equals, I can say 3x minus 10 equals, because I'm just replacing, I'm just substituting y out for what it's equal to. So I erase, we call this the substitution method. It's no different than in a basketball game. Billy, you're out. Ricky, you're in. Subbing one person in for another. So I'm subbing this in for that. Putting it right here. 3x minus 10. Okay? Now what you have done is you've set up an equation that we can solve. Now this top equation has no y's, and we can work down and we can solve it. So I have to erase this because we'll, we'll use this in a little bit. So I'm going to write it off to the side y equals 3x minus 10. And now let's erase this so we can work straight down. Okay, so all we've done up to this point is we took that bottom equation, which was equal to y, and I put the expression where the y was on the top equation. Now I can solve by working down. I'm gonna push everything over to the right side so that I can get zero all alone on the left side. Remember, we wanna set our quadratics equal to zero so we can solve them. All right, here we go. So let's subtract 3x, inverse operations, take 3x away from its like term of 5x. That's gonna create a negative 8x. I can also add 10 to eliminate, inverse operate, add 10, add 10 to the other constant, which is a six over here. Now I have plus 16, I can bring down x squared. We're not changing that at all. Now I have nothing over here on the left, so it's equal to zero. I've done exactly what I wanted to. I set a quadratic up equal to zero so I can factor and get my solutions. All right, so let's factor this quadratic out. Hopefully you already know how to factor. If not, you can go back and watch one of my previous videos where I show you how to factor quadratics. Set equal to zero. All right, we want to find factors of 16, specifically two numbers that will multiply together to make 16, but when we sum them up or add them up, we get the middle term of negative 8. I think negative 4 times another negative 4 would make 16. They would also add to make negative 8, so I found the two values I like. I'm going to break this trinomial up into two binomials, factoring it out. Binomial times another binomial. We know we're going to have an x and an x in the front because x times x is what's going to create the x squared. I steal minus 4 and minus 4 to plug it in. And now I have factored out the quadratic. One thing I see a lot is kids do all the right steps. They get to the end and they're like, sweet, x is negative 4. 
we're trying to figure out a number that we could put in for x, subtract four from it to create a zero because whatever zero times anything in the world over here is gonna give us a zero there. So we always go to the opposite of what we see. If there's no number in front of this x here, just say opposite of four is x has to be, excuse me, opposite of negative four is positive four. So x is positive four. So right now what we have found is we found the x value that we can plug into the original equation, which was this and, oh gosh, what was it? Y equals x squared, I have it written down, minus 5x plus 6, minus 5x plus 6. Those were our two original equations. Okay, now I can plug this 4 either here or into both of those x spots, or terms I should say, to solve. Pick one of the two. Tell you right now, the easier of the two is going to be the linear. You just need to take 3, multiply it by x, and subtract 10. What's 3 times x? Well, if x is 4, 3 times 4 minus 10 is going to give me what? 3 times 4 makes 12, minus 10 makes 2. So y equals 2. Now we have our x and we have our y. We can give our solution, and I will tell you right now, because we only came up with one answer here, normally we might have minus four and like plus eight. So we'd actually have two answers because if I had plus eight there, I'd do the opposite of positive eight, I'd say negative eight. But I don't have that, I have two of the exact same binomials. So I only get one answer. So my solution is four, two. Four is my x, two is my y. What that would look like on a graph, if you were to graph these out, okay, you're gonna have a parabola and a line, and it's gonna hit in one spot and one spot only, and that spot is gonna be at four, two. Substitution method. You take the two equations that are originally provided to you. You take the part that is equal to a single variable and you replace or sub it out to the other equation. You solve that equation for the variable that's still there. Once you know that number, plug it back into one of the original equations to solve for the second variable. Once you have both variables, you have an ordered pair. Study hard and good luck on your upcoming test. You got this.